Hi, I'm Lance Henriksen. You're watching Brian Lomax's Movie Talk. Don't turn it off. Hello there and welcome to Brian Lomax Movie Talk. I'm going to be talking in a little moment just about the, the new Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice trailer that hit at Comic Con 2015. Uh, but first, just before I begin, I'd just like to point out that my new feature film, my first feature film, uh, The Life and Times of the Real Robin Hood, is now available on Amazon.co.uk. Uh, it's on DVD for £12.99 and this is basically what it looks like. This is what you'd be getting as the front cover. We've got the back cover there and inside obviously we have the disc and the chapter selections leaflet but yeah that's uh it's out on dvd now so please uh check that out and if you're a fan of robin hood buy the dvd anyway enough of that the Batman v Superman trailer, let's begin. I've got to say, I absolutely loved this trailer and that's probably the uh, kind of attitude you would expect coming from me. Anyone who knows me knows I'm a huge Batman fan, but Ben Affleck, from what I can see on this trailer, is killing it as Batman. He looks awesome. Uh, I love the setup for this film. I love that we see stuff from Man of Steel, that we go back in time and that the filmmakers directly address a lot of the criticism that was thrown at Man of Steel with all the destruction. That is playing an absolute pivotal part of this movie. We see that in the way that Bruce Wayne is, is kind of put directly into that moment, into those scenes from Man of Steel and from the fact that Superman now is being essentially put on trial. We get a very brief glimpse of what I can only assume is Wayne Manor although it looks really disheveled kind of beaten up and as though nobody lives there anymore so we get the sense that we're going to be finding a Batman that is long since retired and that he's having to come back for, for well obvious reasons uh, we also get a better look at Jeremy Irons as Alfred and I really love what they're doing with Alfred here he's the voice of reason for Bruce he's Bruce's conscience and that is always the best way to use Alfred Bruce is essentially completely off the rails. He's he's a he's a psychopath, a sociopath, let's say. Um, and without that tutoring, without that mentorship by Alfred, the guy who keeps him on the right track, then he would just be a, a mindless vigilante who who probably would be a lot more violent than he actually is. It's Alfred who is his rock. What I also love about this trailer is the few references we get to Robin. We actually see Robin's costume with a, a, a sign written all over it by Joker. So clearly that's going to play a big part in in where Batman is at in his career, having lost the Joe, having lost Robin to the Joker. Uh, anyone who's a fan of the comic books will know will get those references um, so I, I really hope they are going to play on that which it seems like they really are as well as the shot of Wayne Manor we get a brief shot of the Batcave I'm assuming this is where that Robin costume is but we get like a brief glimpse we see Bruce walking on one of the uh, upper tiers of it and we get to see like the, the Batmobile covered up in a shroud and possibly the Batwing there so there's really some good stuff there for any comic book fans uh, whether this is the Batcave that is under Wayne Manor and that's where Bruce was walking to as he was going towards Wayne Manor who knows it could be like the Nolan verse in which he had a base of operations elsewhere we'll look forward to finding out another scene that we get in this trailer is a criminal who has been caught by Batman and we get to see that Batman has actually left scars on this guy and I don't mean just bruises cuts and bruises but has literally carved a bat symbol into him which suggests a much more brutal and much crueler Batman than we've seen in previous versions. Now this would tie in very well obviously to, to a lot of the other references that are in this film which are that this film is pretty much an adaptation of Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns in which Batman was much later in his career or is much later in his career and has become a lot more jaded and a lot more brutal in order to survive at what he is doing. Diane Lane as Martha Kent gets a nice few lines here as well in which she pretty much sets up the conflict that Superman has in this film. Now that he's kind of outed himself he's has these godlike powers does he become the person that people want him to be or can he still be his own man that's the conflict the character is gonna have in this film where does that line end where does he stop being slave to the people and actually become 
I don't know, I guess a leader for the people. We do get to see a woman throughout this trailer as well, just in a few little snippets. She's the woman who's bringing Zod's dead body into LexCorp. Now, I have a slight feeling that this will be Mercy. Uh, anyone who knows the Superman animated series and the comic books, this is a, a right-hand woman for Lex Luthor. Uh, and this, this woman that we see in the trailer seems to fit that bill quite nicely, so I'll be very happy if this is who it is. On the subject of Zod's dead body, uh, I do love the inclusion of it in there. I've got to say, was not expecting that at all. To see him just kind of appear, uh, whether they got the actor back or whether they did some kind of modeling or something, I don't know, but it's amazing because one, it points to obviously leading on from events from Man of Steel, but second, it also suggests maybe we'll get a resurrection of that character at some point, or what I'm more kind of thinking this is, is actually a, a reference to Doomsday. Could this possibly be the, the origin of Doomsday. Now there's been some speculation, some talk of Doomsday being in this film, some designs were leaked, some so-called designs, I, do, I don't know how real they were or not um, with, with regards to where, where they are linked with the production, but obviously Doomsday is going to be a big bad guy that they're going to want to work towards and what my question is, is is Zod the start of that? Is Lex Luthor and his scientific wranglings, his meddlings, looking at Zod's corpse, going to result in Doomsday in a later film? I wouldn't be too, too surprised if we have some kind of end credit sequence with regards to that. We get to see a lot of Wonder Woman in this trailer as well. We see her as Diana mixing with Bruce Wayne, so clearly something kind of relationship is going to go on between those two. And we get to see her as Wonder Woman in quite a big action sequence by the look of things she's really throwing down so it'd be really interesting to see just how big a part she's going to have in this film. We get to see Batman throwing down with all these soldiers who have these S patches on their shoulders. Now what I want to know is are these guys working for the government, for the military, who are they working for? And does it mean that the government or the military, whoever it is they're working for, are in full support of Superman? Are they behind Superman? And as a result are they going up against Batman? Because it clearly looks that way in the trailer. Batman is beating the crap out of quite a few of them. So I'm really looking Looking forward to seeing how that's going to play out as well, that the relationship between, between Batman and everyone else in this film. It seems like Batman is a proper outsider, really dark, proper vigilante that the press is against, the government is against, just everyone just does not trust, despite the fact that he probably has the best intentions at heart. And so finally the last thing to say about the trailer is Lex Luthor, Jesse Eisenberg gotta say love him in this trailer i don't want to come off like a complete fanboy but just the delivery of his lines he's when they when when he was announced i saw what they were going for with this whole mark zuckerberg but a little bit more twisted a little bit darker a little bit more psychotic and i feel that that's what they've pulled off that's what i was expecting it was what i was hoping for and it seems to be delivering that line that he comes out with the red capes are coming the red capes are coming i love his delivery of that line it's it's lex luther as as i would imagine him so again really looking forward to seeing eisenberg's interpretation of that throughout the rest of the film he sold me on it in this trailer and of course his character is stood right in front of a big block of kryptonite at some point in this trailer what i want to know is is batman going to use some of that kryptonite to fight superman is he going to have it like with frank miller's story the the dark knight returns is he going to use that in some way in his gloves or whatever just to even out the odds obviously lex luther is going to use it later down the line whether that'll be in this film or in a later one who knows but there you go. There's my thoughts on the new trailer. I would like to know what you think. Please comment below and let me know what was the bit in this that stood out most for you. Or do you not like it at all? Did you hate this trailer? As I said, comment below, let me know. Until next time, thanks for watching. The stories that, like uh, The Dark Knight Returns, are set much later in Batman's career. There goes my phone.